She's not what you'd expect. She's tough and feisty, but gentle and tender. She makes millions and gives millions to the poor. She cries, she laughs, she teaches, she comforts. This is The Danny Johnson Show. Welcome to The Danny Johnson Show. I hope that today's show finds you in a place where you're ready actually to make some really important decisions. Decisions actually that can set you and your children up for the rest of your lives. And not only for the rest of your living life here, but even after you're gone, right? You may have a next generation. If you're married and you have kids, there's another generation that's gonna be coming after you. And either you will be praised by that generation saying, oh my goodness, my grand or my great grand mother or father made some important changes in their life and they set the rest of the course of our destiny up for financial success instead of financial ruin. Hi, I'm Danny Johnson. This is the Danny Johnson Show. We're here every single day and we're here to help you succeed. Why do we do this? Listen, there's a popular theme or even theology out there about success. And I believe that we have got to challenge that theme. You see, they tell us, in fact, mainstream media tells us that success looks like giant houses and, and cars, like tons of luxury cars and, and, um, you know, shopping all the time and, and buying until we can't buy anymore, meaning shop till you drop. The popular recommendation of success is using debt in order to look successful. You know, I came across this passage a long time ago. It's a powerful passage and it says this. It says, one man shows himself to be rich, yet he's poor. Yet the wealthy shows himself to be poor, but yet he is wealthy. Isn't that just so true? You see, my husband and I used to be a part of that group. We did, man. When we first started making money, largely because we came from extreme poverty, well, extreme poverty in the United States of America, certainly not extreme poverty in places like, you know, Nicaragua or Haiti, but we grew up on welfare and, and often dinner was, you know, Wonder Bread with margarine and garlic salt because my parents made choices that were not the best financial choices. They lived their life full of pleasures instead of actually, yeah, buying food for the family. But that really has nothing to do with today. What it, do, what it does have to do with is both your and my financial choices. And we are in control of our own finances and we can actually change our financial destiny just as my family has changed our financial destiny. Our kids have not been raised on welfare. Our kids actually have been raised in a very nice, moderate home and largely due to learning a completely different mindset concerning money. But in my beginning days, in fact, 24 years ago, I was a homeless woman. And as a homeless woman with $35,000 in debt, $2.03 to my name, totally a financial failure. I mean, and feeling, uh, I wanted to die, to be honest with you. The pressure of that $35,000 in debt, the pressure of knowing that somebody was trying to search for my car, which at the time was also my home, this was a terrible thing. And so at that time, 24 years ago, I made some really strong decisions. And one of them was that I would never return back to broke again. And I never wanted to go into debt again. And I never wanted to live this way again. Now, most of that commitment I stuck to. And then, you know, I never returned back to broke, but I did end up paying off all my debt and then going back into debt and then paying off the debt and then going back into debt. But oh Lord, I'm telling you, it was a disaster and a nightmare. So today I wanna show you some simple little strategies, some simple little steps on how you can prepare you and your family to not live under the modern day slavery and bondage of debt. Now you might be saying right now, Danny, I don't wanna talk about debt, it's too painful. No, well, we gotta talk about it, buddy. We gotta talk about it, why? You can't keep ignoring the bills that are showing up. You can't keep dodging the calls from the creditors. You can't keep losing sleep over this. You have to solve this problem. So one of the things that we have to identify is how does it feel for you to be in debt? There's a quote that actually came up in the 1800s. Check this out. It was by an American journalist named Ambrose Beers. And he says this, an, an, an ingenious debt, an ingenious substitute for the chain and whip of a slave driver. I want you to view MasterCard, Visa, American Express, as well as all the department uh, store cards that you may have, plus your mortgage, as your slave driver. Like, oh my gosh, why would I wanna do that? Because we need to get real here. You have to identify who your enemy is in order to overcome, in order to slay your enemy. 
Now, I'm not telling you to go shoot MasterCard. What I am saying is maybe you might want to cut up MasterCard and never use it again. That could be a solution. So here on the Danny Johnson Show, every single day, we're about redefining success for you. And success for you might be different than it is for me. But personally, I can tell you that success for me is having not financial burdens over me, not having a crazy amount of debt or any debt for that matter. Freedom, true freedom. And so is it possible for you to achieve that? Yes, it is. Absolutely. But first of all, we're opening up our phone lines for people to call in and and share what is their current financial situation? How does it feel to be in that debt? And what kind of solutions are you personally looking for to help improve that particular area of your life? Because think about it for a minute. What would it feel like if you didn't have the pressure of debt over your life? What would change? What would change in your life if you were completely debt free? Would you sleep better at night? Would you be as easily angered with your children or with your spouse? What would change? I want you to explore this with me. How would your life improve if you were completely debt free? Now, I hope it wouldn't be that you would go spend wildly. No, because that's actually what got us into debt to begin with, right? Not having any self-control financially. So therefore we end up spending more than we make and then extra more than we make. And then all of a sudden some health problem happens and now we have all this other debt or we lose our job or our income or our business. And now, oh no, we're living off of our credit cards. It's kind of like a lack of planning. But think about it. What would it be like to live completely debt free? Because if you can't picture it, you'll certainly not attain it, right? If you can't envision being completely debt free, I want you to picture how that feels emotionally. I want you to picture what your daily life would actually look like if you were completely debt free. Now I want you to backtrack and and look at today. What are the emotions of that debt? How does it feel to be in debt? What does it motivate you to do? Or is it unmotivating? Like, is it hard for you to get motivated? Is it hard for you to dream? Is it hard for you to plan for the future? Is it hard for you to feel good about yourself? If that's the case, I want you to call me and I want to hear what is debt doing to you, okay? How does it make you feel? We have Alicia on the phone from Alexandria right now. Alicia, uh, welcome to the Danny Johnson Show. How does it feel for you to be in debt? Uh, For me, it feels like a failure. Mm. Kind of like I failed my children because I put ourselves into this situation and just like a heavy feeling that I have every day when I wake up and when I go to bed, it just kind of keeps recurring. You know what, um, Alicia, I want to kind of backdrop on this. How you said that you feel like a failure. Why do you feel like a failure? Uh, well, because I made some choices that I knew I was making that I thought I would be able to fix before now. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's just some things that I'm not able to provide for my children that I would like to, because of those choices that have put us in debt where I have to, you know, put things towards, towards interest and whatnot that has built up over the years versus being able to provide certain things and opportunities for them. Okay. So let's backtrack because I think it's really important that when we, in order for us to be completely free financially, we have to learn a completely different mindset. Um, And so here's what I want us to do. You said you made choices in earlier in life. What were some of those choices? How did you end up in debt? I know how I end up in debt. But everybody's story is a little different. But how did you end up in debt? What was the very first uh-huh. time that you had made your first pers- purchase using debt? My very first time, well, when I had my daughter 16 years ago, uh, was when I used my first credit card, and that mm. was to buy baby stuff that we needed. Um, Okay, no, wait, time out right there. I want to time out right there. Okay, so first of all, you sound like you're 16. (laughs) You certainly don't sound like you have a 16-year-old daughter. Second of all, now look at this. You had a baby, right? Did you not have a baby shower? I did. um, Okay, hold on. So you had a baby shower. Okay, but hold on. So (laughs) looking back 16 years ago, uh, and that was your first time using a credit card, and you used the word for things that we needed, Looking back, right. were those things that you actually needed or were those things that you thought you wanted? 
Uh, well, it was for a crib and stroller and just big things that we didn't get at a baby shower. So okay, but hold on, hold on. Them. And so where did you buy these things? A Target. Oh, so you bought a new crib and a new dresser and a new changing table. Correct. <laughs> okay, so now let's go back and really look at the reality. Did you need to buy a new crib for your daughter? No. No. In fact, are there generally no. people usually giving away cribs if you actually just hunt around a little bit? Are there people giving away the baby crib, the porta crib, the baby dresser, and the changing table? Absolutely. Yeah. And so I just it, didn't think of that at the time back then. And and why did you not think of it at the time back then? Yeah, you know, I was young and No, 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 no. Like it's really simple. Do what everybody else is it's, doing. Yes. <laughs> yes. So you did what everybody else was doing. And secondly, it's because you had the option to use the credit card. Right. Because you had available to you debt. Because it was a temptation in your wallet. Because it was an opportunity, you took advantage of it. And so we all do that. And so what's here so interesting is if you literally didn't have any money or all you had was a hundred dollar budget, right? That's all that you had. That's all that you and your husband, you're young and that's all you could muster to save. You would have found a crib and a dresser and a changing table to fit within the budget. Now, do you believe that? Yes, I do. You know it's true. <laughs> I do know it's true. You absolutely know it's true. People are always trying to offload stuff and get rid of it because the crib is only used for a couple of years, right? It's crazy. So again, yes. this is a conditioning, Alicia, and that's the thing, the mindset that has to be broken. And you said it best right here. I did what everybody else was doing. Okay, yes, you're right, because our society says you want it, charge it. Well, I'm here to tell you that 98% of the population ends up dead or dead broke by the age of 65 because of that mindset. I want what I want. I want it now and I'm going to charge it so I can get what I want. Instead of if I really had no money and I had to become resourceful and I really had to solve this problem, could I find it for free or could I find it for pennies on the dollar and it'd be perfect? Listen to this. My grandson, Anthem, he's my seventh grandson. He is sleeping in the crib that his mother slept in 23 years ago and that his uncles slept in. We're talking all the kids use the crib and the crib is perfectly brand new. I've yet to see too many cribs that are completely destroyed. They seem to last right. a long time. All right, awesome. I'm proud of you, girl. And so moving forward, you got to make those same kinds of decisions. Don't do what everybody else does, but find a way to do it with no money. This is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more of the Danny Johnson Show right after this. More than just a radio show. This is the Danny Johnson Show. The whole story of how I went from homeless to millions is right here in this book, First Steps to Wealth. I'd love to give you a free copy of this book. Just dial 888-757-8880. You can get your free copy of this book. It's like a real book, my friend. You can get an ebook copy for free right now, or if you'd like to pay the shipping to get this $15 book to your house, I'd be happy to send it to you. 888-757-8880. Get your copy of First Steps to Wealth today and begin on a brand new path of some great success. If you're one of the millions who simply can't do anything about their debt, listen closely. This part is for you. Our culture is pressing on us every single day. More importantly, it's pressing on our children, especially with the area of money and debt. You see, it's kind of like this. Well, everybody else is using it, so why not? You know, gosh, I had that same attitude about sex when I was in high school. Well, everybody else is doing it. Does that make it right? Right? Does it make it right that if everyone else is using their credit card to live on for their daily expenses, does it mean that it's wise? Does it mean that this is how you should live? Don't allow yourself to be pressed in upon a, a, by a society that's a mess. It's a disaster. Come on. We have over $13 trillion of consumer debt on top of $16 trillion national moving to $17 trillion national debt. Honestly, if you want to become successful, you got to look at what everybody else is doing and doing the exact opposite. And I know that right now you might be saying, Danny Johnson, really? Success is like so not even in my scope. I just want to survive. Well, that's one of the things that has to change about the way you're thinking. It does, because you can't just survive. 
You gotta learn how to thrive, which is why we're here every single day, Monday through Friday, even on Sundays, uh, and in some places on Saturdays, here on The Danny Johnson Show. We are redefining success for you. And in redefining it, you have to understand what definition of success are you currently following? Are you following the success status quo of the masses? Because the masses are wrong. You have to know that. They're totally wrong. Keeping up with the Joneses? The Joneses are broke, friend. They're broke. You don't want to keep up with those suckers. Their houses are being foreclosed on. They've got $100,000 or more in credit card debt. They've got car debt that, you know, two, three cars that have leases on them. Total that up, you're moving up to $70,000, even $100,000 in debt and just car debt. Okay, let, let's throw in the student loans. Woo! You know, what is it? $100,000? $180,000? Is it $200,000? Oh, wait! Mom and dad both have student loans. Yikes! Right? And then hold on a second. We had a baby, so now there is what? Insurance didn't cover everything. Thank you, Obamacare. It, it didn't cover everything, so now you have a $9,000 or $10,000 or $20,000 copay, if you will, for, for, for the baby that you had. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? So life seems to tack on more and more debt if we're living our life according to the masses. And so that's why we're here every day to challenge that mindset, to challenge what status quo is saying about success and to redefine it. So you got to have your own definition. So what does it look like for you? And especially in the area, because we're talking about debt today, we're talking about being debt free. We're talking about coming out from under modern day slavery. The ball and the chain is not your spouse. The ball and the chain is Visa Master. MasterCard and the mortgage and the lease on the car or the student loans. So let's figure out how we can help you solve those financial issues in your life and help you to move forward. We've got Bruce on the line from Baltimore. Bruce, how can we help you today concerning your debt? Hi, Danny. Um, I have a, a credit card debt that has maxed out. Um, I My house is under short sale mm. and I don't have cash. And my question is, do I continue to try to make the minimum payment, which by itself is tough, or do I go to a credit agency or one of those companies that will settle my debt for a lower amount, mm -hmm. but of course will really mm -hmm. um, mess up my credit by doing that? Okay, Let, let's handle this one thing at a time. Number one, debt consolidation is something I am absolutely not for. You have to remember that those debt consolidation places have to make money somehow, right? <laughs> So they're making money still on your money and they're still, uh, and not only that, but the debt consolidation actually kind of kills the opportunity to pay off debt quicker. And I'll, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Second of all, what I want you to do is if you have a piece of paper and a pen, I want you to write down what is your current monthly income. What is that figure? Okay. And it, it'd be great if you could share it with me because I'm going to I'm gonna kind of just give you a quick, you know, 101 on budgeting so that we can actually look at, all right, where is the money going? Because that's one of the first things that you have to figure out is where is the money going? So it, what is your current monthly total income? I'd say it's around $4,000 a month. Okay, cool. And then how much is your mortgage? Well, my mortgage is... Uh, with the second mortgage is closer to 2000 but I haven't paid either since June, which is why my house is under a short sale. Okay, cool. All right, so then you have $4,000 a month that you're spending on what? Because if you're not making your house Util payment, okay, how much utilities, is your utilities? Um, food, okay. obviously cable. Right, so, um, oh, so you still have cable even though your house is in short sale? That might be something well, that my you... My son and, and his girlfriend live here, and they pay um, I, for the cable. Oh, gosh. Okay. Here's, here's what I want you to do. Uh, we're about to take a real quick break, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to make a list of exactly how much is the electric bill, how much is the cable bill, how much is the cell phone bill, how much are you guys spending on food, and then we'll continue after the break, and we're going to break it down, and I'm going to show you how you can pay off debt, and you might be able to make your mortgage payment, too. This is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more solving your debt issues and coming out of slavery right after this. There is one person who will always care about you. This is The Danny Johnson Show. This is your chance. This is your shot. Get your copy of War on Debt right now. There's one waiting for you that has your family's name on it. And inside that package is freedom. Your freedom, your family's freedom is on the inside of that package. All you have to do is open it up 
press play and start applying what I teach you in this program. 888-757-8880. You and I are going to help your family become completely debt-free in the next five to seven years. Just imagine how that's going to feel. Are you ready for a whole new mindset? This is The Danny Johnson Show. You might be in a situation where your house is under a short sale because you haven't been able to make your mortgage payment for about eight or nine months. You might be in a situation where you are not able even to make all your credit card payments. What do you do? This is exactly where our friend Bruce finds himself. He just called in and he's saying, uh, my house is under a short sale. I can't make my credit card payments. What do I do? What's the best uh, place for me to go? Should I do the debt consolidation type things and, and it'll destroy my credit? Or what do I do with all of this? Listen, I know that there's a lot of people that are in the exact same situation that Bruce is in. And I'm so grateful that he's called in today because here on the Danny Johnson Show, we love to obliterate the current status quo of success. Because the current status quo of success doesn't really mean success. And you have to define it for yourself. What do you want your life to be? How do you want to live? So what I asked Bruce to do was make me a list of what all of his expenses are. We're now back from that break. So Bruce, what do you got? So you said you got $4,000 a month in income. You've got your electric bill, um, your mortgage, you said that you haven't paid since last June. And you know, lots of people are doing that. So what is the electric bill? Because that still means that we have $4,000 a month. The electric bill is ridiculously high. It's around $1,000 a month. Why is your electric bill $1,000 a month? Um, it's a pretty big house, but also it's very poorly insulated. Um, mm -hmm. And I've, I've had it assessed, and they say my furnace is bad, my insulation is bad, and um, oh. it, it, gets, it gets lower. It gets into the three dollars $400 during the nicer weather, but in the frigid east, um, the past couple months, it's been $1,000. Do you guys have a fireplace? Uh, we have a gas fireplace. You have a gas fireplace. So are you including electric and gas together? Um, it's propane, so yes. Okay, so it's uh, propane and electric is connected in the bill. That's the full $1,000 a month. That's right. absolutely crazy. Okay. It's actually, it was actually 1200 this past month, but it's that's, usually around 1000 That's unbelievable. Okay, um, so I'll just, I'll just give you this. Um, on the propane and, and the electric bill, I, what do you have your thermostat stat at? Hello, Bruce? Looks like we lost Bruce. Okay, well, I'll just speak to this. Okay, first of all, $1,000 a month for an electric bill is, wow, that's just completely astronomical. So what do we do about that? First of all, in our house, I don't know where you have your electric bill set at, but um, if your electric bill is set at, you know, 70 during the winter, I think that's unreasonable. Our, electri our uh, thermostat is set around 65 four and that's when everyone's home. I set it at 60 when nobody is home. And why? My answer is put more clothes on. It's winter time. So, so bundle up. I wear wool socks and I wear wool slippers. I wear, you know, sweatshirts. I wear lots of layers. I'll even wear my down jacket while I'm in my house. And I know for you right now, you're like, Pfft. Danny, why would you do that? Listen, I'm a multimillionaire and I believe in keeping the money instead of spending it on the electric company. So that's one thing. Here's another thing, the credit, okay? This is so interesting. So many people care so much about their credit, but what I find so interesting is that people who are financially independent don't really give much thought to their credit ratings, but the ones that we always hear talking about credit ratings are the ones who are in that 98% category. And so look, does Donald Trump care too much about his credit ratings? No, the guy has declared bankruptcy countless times. So y y you kind of need to look at your mindset and, and where did this mindset come from? I'm not saying blow your credit. That's stupid and irresponsible. But what I am saying is that sometimes if you're allowing, oh, I'm going to mess up my credit. Well, um, sometimes that is what happens. And, I, and, and if you're financially responsible, sometimes those are consequences of, of what that is. All right. looks like we got Bruce back. Um, Bruce? Hi. Hi. Okay. I don't know what happened there with your phone. All right. So you said the electric bill's a thousand. I just finished saying, turn that thing way down and put on a lot of clothes. Uh, my kids, right. in fact, my kids this one time, it was hilarious, Bruce. They took a picture and sent it to me of them in their entire ski gear while they were doing their homework at school saying, mom, it's cold in this house. <laughs> My answer I have, is- I've moved it down to 65 and that's, that's pretty cool, cold in here. I'm wearing sweats. 
Uh, well, my thermostat when I'm home is set around 64, and when we're not home, it's set at 60, and I wear wool socks, and I wear a down jacket in the house, and I wear several layers. Now, mind you, I'm financially independent. I could pay a $1,000 bill for electric bill, but I refuse to do that. I just won't make that happen. I just will not. Right. The other thing, uh, you know, lots of extra blankets on the bed. Uh, drink hot tea. It warms up the whole body. Uh, those are little tricks that we've used for years to keep our electric bill way, way, way down. All all right, cable, now here you go. This is where you and I are not gonna see eye to eye. Cable is a luxury. That's an absolute luxury. And if you're in a situation where you can't make your financial uh, bills, you can't make your, your financial commitments to the people that lent you money, Cable's a luxury, and that would be the very first thing that would be coming off the list. And, and the, by the way, your son and her, his girlfriend, are they paying you rent? They are paying me rent equivalent to um it was supposed to be equivalent to the utilities in cable because after I went to your first steps to success in Baltimore in May, I came home and announced that I was canceling my cable and they said, we want it, we will pay for it. Nope. So that's the only reason I still have it. Yeah. No, I'd be canceling a cable and they still need to give you the money. <laughs> um, right. I wish. Do you know what I'm saying? So, and if they're not paying you, okay, so they're supposed to be paying you a thousand dollars a month and they're not? Yes. They are. They are paying you $1,000 a month. Okay, well... And that's, fa that, that's factored into my income. Into your income. Okay, that's where your $4,000 a month is coming from. Okay, cool. All right, so uh, cable would definitely... I think you had the right conviction, and if they want to cable television, they can move out. They can move somewhere else, and you can rent your room to somebody else that will pay you that much money and not have cable. That's, that's what I would do. We don't have cable. Okay. Uh, my son and my my son and my daughter in law were living with us. We didn't have cable. That that's just not an option. Okay. So uh, food. What do you come on? Food. If you've been to first step success, you know, dude, what my uh, stance is on that. Twenty dollars per week yeah. per person. Cooking, breakfast, lunch, and mine's dinner. Slightly my mine's slightly higher than that. Uh, what's slightly higher, Bruce? <laughs> um, I would say probably um, around three hundred a week. Did you say Netting. slightly higher? <laughs> oh my gosh. $20 per person per week. And slightly higher to you is $300 a week on food? I don't think it's slightly. I, I, I do carry out a lot. Bruce. 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 I love you, man. But you're living like a king. And you've got debt. The priority has to shift. Eating out when, you, when you're saying, I can't make my mortgage payment, eating out when you're saying, I can't make my MasterCard and Visa and my car payment, it's not an option, man. You gotta come out of that 98% way of thinking. You, let me ask you a question. Do you wanna live in this kind of financial bondage for the rest of your life? Of course not. You don't. How do you want to live? What, what will it feel like to have financial freedom? Um, I just want, obviously, not to have that debt, and that will allow me to sleep better at night um, and, and just be a happier person. You yes. know, money is not super expensive, uh, important to me at this point in my life, but debt yes. um, hangs over me like a dark cloud. So let me tell you something. Your $1,200 a month on food is what's keeping you in debt. So can I ask you, where the heck are you eating for $300 a week? And is that well, I'll, worth it? I'll do food shopping to get stuff for breakfast and lunch. Is you know, it and worth stuff it? Stuff around the house. Is it worth I told you, it's $20 per week. I just went to the grocery store yesterday. I shopped for two weeks. It was $90 for two weeks worth of food. That goes for also, I'm feeding nine people on Friday night for a big celebration for Shabbat. So, meaning it's a feast on Friday night. And so I, I, that included wine. You know what I'm saying? I mean, friend, listen to me. $300 a week on food, $1,200 a month, even if you cut that in half, if you made the decision that I hate this debt so much that I'm willing to at least cut it in half, that's an extra $150 per week that can go towards debt. You can be paying your bills. You can do that. 
If you're willing to make simple little changes, number one, you're gonna feel better. Number two, you're gonna be healthier. Number three, you're gonna sleep better at night because you're not putting pollutants from eating out into your body. You might, I don't know if you need to lose weight, but typically if you're eating out that much, typically there's a few extra pounds here and there that are hanging around that you probably don't want to have in your body. No, I I actually very healthy. In fact, I'm a personal trainer, but. You're a personal trainer and you're eating $300 a month worth of, $300 a week worth of food? Bruce. What? Bruce. A lot of expensive vegetables. Uh, I'm so sorry. I buy tons of vegetables and they ain't that, they ain't $300 a week for one person expensive. So you know what? You got to make a choice, man. You got to make a choice. And if you've got the discipline to be a personal trainer, then you've got the discipline to attack your finances in the same exact way that you're telling other people to have discipline with their muscles. It's time to exercise the muscle of self-control with spending, especially $300 a week on food, especially with cable, especially with keeping the thermostat higher than it needs to be. There has to be no go, no option, non-negotiables in your financial life, just as you teach your clients. So that's my recommendation. This is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more right after this. Don't go away. The next segment might just change your life. This is the Danny Johnson show. I just heard this amazing story. One of our clients had written us telling us that they had used job domination and unlimited success and has absolutely exploded their career. He said, Danny, I don't know where I'd be today without job domination and unlimited success. Listen, do you want more recognition from your coworkers? Do you want to be recommended to people all over the world? Do you want to be somebody that is highly sought after? Listen, if you're in a dead end place where this gentleman found himself, but then learned new strategies and changed everything in his work life, and obviously this has resulted in higher bonuses and pay raises, you're next. 888-757-8880. Get your copy of Job Domination right now. 888-757-8880. Again, 888-757-8880. Job Domination, that's what you need. It's time for you to dominate the job market and break through the rut that you're in. And now back to the Danny Johnson Show. I have to be completely honest with you. (laughs) It really bothers me when people say that they have to do something, like they've got to become debt free, that they want to no longer live under the slavery of debt. And I hate Danny the way it makes me lose sleep. But then they willfully still have cable television, not making their mortgage payment, but willingly spending $300 a week for one person on food. Oh! It makes my blood boil. Listen to me right now. If you really want to be successful financially, then you cannot be stupid financially. You cannot do what everyone else is doing and that's justifying their spending. The same individual that I talked to earlier not only has crazy amount of credit card debt and isn't making his mortgage payment, but spending $300 a week on food. Listen, we can't be like that. You see, there you go. That is the American, actually that's the Western theology of success. No, that that couldn't, that that is like not only not success, that's stupidity. You cannot be like those people. Do you hear me? Here on the Danny Johnson Show every single day. We are challenging what you've been conditioned for success. We're redefining it. We're we're changing it up. We're throwing out what we know brings failure and bringing in what we know will help you and your family for generations to come to have long lasting success. All right, so we're talking about debt. We're talking about how to come out of it. We're talking about simple little changes that you can make that will help to improve your sleep, improve your sex life, simple little changes that will help to improve your overall peace. strengthen your confidence, your self-esteem, help you to become more productive at work because we know this, that debt hanging over your life robs all those areas of your life. You know that the pressure of it even has causes you not to be as patient with your children as you should be. So tell me if you are on a plan for paying off debt, if you are on a plan and you've made up your mind and you've made chases, what are the changes that you've actually made? What improvements have you made to help you have a little bit of success? Joining me now is Elise from Montana. Welcome to the Danny Johnson Show. 
Hi there. Hi. Thank you. <laughs> so, yes, we've been on a debt-free plan. Um, we started in 2014, and I'm really proud to say that we paid off my husband's student loan debt of $140,000 in November. Wow. So you made the decision in 2014 to pay off debt, and you paid off $140,000 worth of student loan debts as of November. What moved you yes. to make the decision to pay off debt? Um, honestly, 10 years ago when my husband went back to school in his 30s, he, he went to school to be a PA. So we took on student loan debt, not knowing the ramifications for that later. And realized that living under that debt was not freedom. No. And, you know, him going back to school, we thought, oh, he's going to be paid well. Yeah. That will improve our standing in life. We'll be able to save for retirement, save for a kid's college. And guess what? All of his paycheck went to that student loan debt. And wow. we've lived credit card free and on a cash flow basis. Wow. For as long as I can remember. I've always been, I was raised not to live with debt where my husband was raised to live with debt yep. um, and credit card debt. So that was kind of a retraining we had to do with him. Yep. But we just got really inspired in 2014. We decided we were, we added a stream of income to the family. We, we started a small business. Wow. And from there, we got just really dedicated. We, we were always very careful about our purchasing. Mm -hmm. we, we haven't had cable. I know your previous caller was, just, we were talking about that, but <gasps> we haven't had cable um, or, you know, little fluffy things in our lives because we know the freedom that comes with uh, being debt free yeah. will be the most fulfilling. What inspired you in 2014 versus 2013, 2012, 2010? What inspired you to attack this thing? <laughs> Well, I think that years prior, we thought just throwing all of his income at paying down the student loans would get us there. But we, I guess as the years went by, we realized that that wasn't the case. And it became very frightening to us. You know, my oldest son is 10. And yeah. so it became very frightening to us when we realized that we would still be paying down that debt for Rob's student loans when my son, Andrew, w was going to college. Wow. And, wow. Uh, Isn't that crazy to think so, about? Yes. Yes. And, um, but I, I guess on the other hand, too, we're not sure if college will be the right that's right. For our kids. Yeah. We homeschool them. No, but the whole idea, the whole idea, at least, that you guys, that you made a decision that your husband would go back to school and put, you know, $140,000 mm -hmm. worth of college debt and that, oh, no, we'll pay that off and we'll make more money and, you know, we'll be able to pay for our kids' college tuition and we'll be set financially if we go into college debt so that my husband can make more money. Come to find out that your husband, if you were on the same track of paying off the debt the way that you were, that your son would have been in college and you were still paying off the college debt. That's like ridiculous, isn't it? That's right. And you know what's so sad yeah, is that most people don't scary. think about that. Mm -hmm. Most people just don't think about that. They just at the, at the, on the they sign on the dotted line saying, oh, well, okay, this is what you got to do to be successful. I'm here to challenge that. No, it's not what you have to do to be successful. My husband and I, neither one of us went to college. And thank God, thank God <laughs> we didn't go to college. I, I already learned how to drink and have sex before I went to college. So I didn't need to go to college to, to pay $100,000 to learn how to do that. But the reality is, is that we learned business and business strategies from training seminars. Instead of spending $100,000 in books and tuition and dorms and all of that kind of stuff. And I'm not against college, but I'm just saying, thank God we didn't do that. We didn't have that college debt. We had other stupid debt, but we didn't have the college debt. So I'm so proud of you. I really am. This is inspiring to me you. that you guys attacked that. <laughs> and in November, you just said done. Thanks so much for calling in and thanks for sharing that because it is possible if you make choices that are wise. It's not possible when you make stupid choices, no question. Uh, we got Randy from Illinois. Uh, Randy, welcome to the Danny Johnson Show. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to share the the fact that uh, I'm 57 years old. Uh, I had pretty well been debt-free for about eight years. Wow. 
And then uh, several things happened. I got fired from the job uh, after I had some health problems. Uh-huh. They let me go. Uh, after that point, I, I tried my own self-employment thing and uh, ended up spending more money to try to mm-hmm. get work than I did getting paid for it. <laughs> so I, um, it ended up that uh, my wife got ill and uh, had to have a, a, a big operation. Um, and so I'm floundering. I'm trying to figure out how to do this with no income wow. and, you know, what, what to do. So wow. I decided to go back to school. Uh, the problem is now that I'm just about completed, I'm looking around and I think, I don't know if this was such a smart decision. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I've kind of, I, I enjoyed what I do, yeah. you know, as far as going to school, but I'm not making any money. Yeah. And, and that, wow. Randy, first of all, I am so I, sorry to hear about your wife's sickness. I'm so sorry to hear about the job loss. Um, that is incredibly unfortunate. Uh, we're going to cut over to a real quick break. When we get back, I'm going to go ahead and address the issue and see if, what we can do to help each other succeed. This is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more right after this. If you've given up hope for your nation, your family, or even your own life, then this show is for you. It's the Danny Johnson Show. Hi, I'm Danny Johnson. The most common question I get usually are from people who are trying to juggle their life. They've got kids. They've got kids who are involved in all kinds of activities. They've got business or their job, finances, trying to get out of debt, plus all their church activities and all the volunteer activities. And they're pulling their hair out going, how do I juggle this all? Man, I once lived just like that until I learned Time Secrets. Time Secrets showed me how to be able to cut my hours from 100 hours a week that I was working down to 20 hours a week and tripled my income as a direct result with what I learned. Time Secrets also showed me how to get my priorities in order, which healed up my marriage. And I became a mother that I want now was proud of versus becoming the mother I didn't want to be. And so if you feel like your world is running around in all kinds of different circles, you can fix that. Call 888-757-8880. Again, 888-757-888-0 for Time Secrets. This is The Danny Johnson Show. You know, sometimes in life, yeah, some bad things happen, right? It's called life. And, and some of those things hurt us financially, which is exactly where Randy finds himself right now. He lost his job. His wife then got sick. He then went to college and later on in life. And now he's looking at, gosh, was this a wise thing to do? Randy, I think we can all look back in life and we can say, wow, was that smart? Was it not? But here's what you can do. You can look to how you can make the best of your current circumstances. You have years of experience in one particular field. I would be going back to learn how you can market yourself in that particular field. Yes, you lost your job due to a sickness that you had, but that's not where you are now. So you have years of experience that I believe companies are actually looking for. And one of the things that I would highly recommend to you is get a hold of Job Domination. I don't know if you're familiar with the website, dannyjohnson.com, but Job Domination is a is digital delivery and you can immediately start learning now how to land uh, a great paying job for you based on what your current, what your, what your past experience is, but more importantly, how you position yourself out there in the marketplace. We get it into our heads that when bad things have happened to us, there's nothing we can do about it. And now we're pretty much just screwed, blued, and tattooed. But that's not the truth. I was a homeless woman 24 years ago, and I had to solve some big, huge problems. And sometimes we have to get creative, and sometimes we have to think outside the box, and oftentimes we got to get advice from other people who've already made it through that terrible place. And so job domination has helped a crazy amount of people land positions that they were not qualified for, land positions. In fact, even some of them, companies created a position for them all on how they use the strategies and job domination on how to interview in such a way that really focuses on what the needs of the company is and really sells the strengths that it is that you have without selling. And so I can't strongly recommend enough. Get a hold of job domination. You can press play today using job domination. And within a few days, you're going to have many opportunities coming your way. Job domination not only will show you how to land it, but how to get promoted 
I have a woman that was promoted three times in three months using job domination. Prior to that, she was jobless for three years. Couldn't provide for her and her kids. So Randy, I hope that helps. That's the best, quickest way that you can solve the problem that you're in right now and, and blessing to you and your wife and a better prosperous future. This is Danny Johnson. Hey, listen, on that note, you know, we all have problems. We do. And, and, and you know, recently I was in Nicaragua and I saw what real problems actually look like. A mother with four children, she's single, two of which are twins who stopped taking, who stopped nursing, therefore she had to buy milk. She makes $2 a day. She's squatting on somebody else's property, has no home of her own, and daily doesn't have food for her children and gets water every four days. That's a real, real, real problem. We are doing what we can to build Autolis and her four children a home and put her in business. Think about that. We're putting her in business. We're going to make sure she's got chickens and a, a, a rooster, three, four hens. She can feed her kids. She can sell the meat. She can sell the eggs. We're also going to teach her how to show, uh, sew. We're going to change her life. And I'm asking you to help us do that. If you go to kingsransom.org and you click on Santa Pancha, Nicaragua, give anything you can to be able to help that family get better on their feet. God bless you. I hope that today was a defining day for you to make new wise choices for your financial better future for generations to come. We'll talk to you tomorrow. God bless. Have a great one. Bye-bye. Hi, welcome to the Danny Johnson YouTube channel. We're super excited to have you here. And every single week, we're going to make sure that you get awesome videos for your business, career, making more money, saving money, annihilating your debt, as well as helping you to handle those really tough problems that you have with people at home, as well as at work, and taking those really good relationships you already have and causing them to flourish and grow. All you have to do is click that subscribe button right down here. Click that and you'll be subscribed to an amazing community of people, as well as some great videos that will help to improve your life. Thanks so much for being here. Subscribe now would be good. Just click it. I know you can see it. It's somewhere down here. Okay, talk to you later. Bye.